Bayer, the wonder drug that works wonders. This is the story of how the multinational drug company, Bayer, infected thousands of people with hepatitis C and HIV, many of whom have since died. You may already know of Bayer's dark past when it comes to IG Farben, World War II and the Nazis. But this story takes place about 30 years later. First of all, you are suing the manufacturer of the blood product that infected your son. Right. We're suing Niles Cutter Pharmaceutical Company. Uh -huh. You allege, among other things, in your lawsuit, and we'll pick up some more details about this, that uh, you're alleging gross negligence at the time. In other words, all kinds of yellow lights went on. I mean, here we were in 1982 talking about this. They, they knew. They you could, believe they knew? Absolutely. They, knew Eric, they, knew. they could have saved Eric's life. They could have stopped the train coming down that track. In the 1970s and 1980s, Bayer and its subsidiaries, Cutter and Miles Laboratories, manufactured and sold a blood product called Coate. Thousands of people were infected with hepatitis and HIV by factor VIII blood products such as Coate. This drug was most commonly used by people with the blood clotting disorder, haemophilia. We're going to be looking at this from a US and UK perspective, but bear in mind this infected product was sold around the world for more than a decade. Before we get into the detail, it's important to understand that by the mid-1970s, it was widely known, including by Bayer, that blood products made by mixing together thousands of plasma donations without any kind of safety treatment would transmit hepatitis. Some blood products, such as albumin, were subject to a heat treatment which killed hepatitis viruses. This had been done with albumin since the 1940s. However, Bayer skipped this step for Coate and sold it anyway. Documents show that Bayer, the US and UK health authorities, knew that patients would be infected by Coate with hepatitis and that hepatitis could be rapidly fatal. Those facts alone will leave you wondering how what happened next could possibly have been allowed to happen. In October 1975, officials in the UK receive a license application for Coate, manufactured and sold by Cutter Laboratories in California, USA. But the license application for Coate faced a problem. The UK licensing authority demanded Cutter provide information about its rates of rejection for blood plasma donors, the reasons for rejection, and other safety information. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Bayer's subsidiary company, Cutter, failed to provide the required safety information and its license application did not progress. But, unfortunately, that was not the end of the Coate story. Far from it. You see, by about a year after Cutter first attempted to get a Coate license in the UK, it had struck a deal with a UK-based company called Spaywood. Spaywood wanted to import Coate from Cutter USA and then sell Coate themselves in the UK, basically acting as a middleman. As unbelievable as it may sound, the Spaywood plan worked. The UK-based Spaywood company was granted a license to sell Coate in the UK, but without having to provide the information originally asked for from Cutter. This would prove a disastrous decision and an immense failing of the UK regulator. So, so, as far as we know, there was a condition to which the licence was subject which was never fulfilled. Yes. And a licence is granted and Coate becomes a concentrate distributed in the UK. What you might think the unsatisfactory position that eventuates is that, one, for whatever reason, those conditions, other than the information about pool sizes, effectively fall away. So, by 1977, Spaywood has a license to sell the known-to-be-potentially-lethal Coate product in the UK, and that's exactly what happens. Haemophilia patients around the UK began to be given hepatitis-infected Coate. And if you thought the Spaywood trick was bad, you won't believe what happens next. 
Three years later, in 1980, documents show that Cutter were not happy with the sales performance of their Spaywood middleman. And so, with Coates still being pumped into patients around the UK, Cutter takes back control of sales from Spaywood by setting up its own direct UK company, Cutter Laboratories Limited. And Cutter Laboratories Limited makes a license application for Coate, which is granted, proving once again just how easy it was to beat the UK regulator with a dangerous product. The timing of Cutter's fresh 1980 UK license couldn't have been worse, at least as far as patient safety was concerned. That's because while the hepatitis C virus, present in every bottle of Coate since it went on sale, can take decades before its often life-ending symptoms become apparent, the 1980s saw a new virus enter Bayer's Coate cash cow. A mystery disease known as the Gay Plague has become an epidemic unprecedented in the history of American medicine. That today from the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta, topping the list of likely victims are male homosexuals who have many partners and drug users who inject themselves with needles. Medical experts say the disease kills four out of every ten people it strikes and that it threatens to explode in the nation's cities. In our relationships are much to chance, but today, if you play around, the stakes are too high because you're gambling with AIDS. Meet someone who is an AIDS carrier, and although condoms give some protection, just one act of intercourse may give you AIDS and lead to death. Sleeping around is a gamble. Casual sex spreads AIDS. In the early 1980s, HIV, the human immunodeficiency virus, was usually referred to as AIDS, Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. AIDS being the condition a person is diagnosed with once HIV has sufficiently destroyed the person's immune system. If you thought Bayer were bad for continuing to sell a product they knew to be infected with hepatitis, you really won't like what Bayer did with AIDS. Internal company documents show that in 1982, Cutter had some evidence that its Coate product might be infecting people with AIDS. Probably a good reason to withdraw their product, you might think. But no, that didn't happen. In December 1982, Cutter executives wasted time debating whether they should continue to collect blood plasma used to make Coate from prisons and other high-risk sources. Almost a year later, in November 1983, Cutter documents still make reference to prison plasma being used to make Coate. Bayer knows they're selling this highly risky product, but just carry on selling it anyway. Coate is still being sold in the UK, and patients are continuing to be exposed to hepatitis and AIDS over and over again. The corporate mentality of Bayer in 1983 is probably best encapsulated by an internal memo from May of that year, which, in relation to AIDS, being in Coate, says, We have to fight the fire with a short-term solution that will preserve our market position. Bayer also talks in the document about ways in which it could make its product safer by heating it. Remember, that other blood product, albumin, which was heated to kill viruses, well, Bayer could have used a similar heating process with Coate. The heat could kill hepatitis and HIV, making it safe. But this heating process made the product less profitable, and it would require investment and resource. Arguably, this is what Bayer should have done before they were ever allowed to sell Coate at all, to make their product safe. But that didn't happen. Bayer continued to sell infected, non-heated Coate in the UK, throughout 1983 and 1984. It wasn't until 1985 that finally only heated Coate began to be sold in the UK, thereby bringing an end to a decade of Bayer selling non-heated, infected Coate in the UK. Some 1,250 people in the UK were infected with HIV, through factor VIII blood products such as Coate. At least 2,000 more were infected with hepatitis C, and only around 250 of those infected with HIV are thought to still be alive now, with most having died of AIDS in the early to mid-90s. And some 300 of those infected with HIV were children. 
No one from Bayer has ever been held accountable for what happened. This is about seeing the pain. This is about not sanitizing bad news. This is about telling the truth. And here it is. This is Eric. What's the force that keeps driving you? My parents. And your father. and before thousands of other kids ever got their first shot. They knew there's document proof. And they now, didn't do anything about it because, about it because money, money and greed. And we'll be back. In 2017, Prime Minister Theresa May announced there would be a public inquiry into the infected blood scandal, an inquiry which is due to publish its final report in autumn 2023. The evidence the inquiry has looked at in relation to Bayer has been of great help in making this video. Victims and families will be hoping that the final report of the UK inquiry lays bare the full extent of Bayer's actions. Bayer were not the only company that sold infected blood products, and while this video has focused on the UK, this is an issue which has affected tens of thousands of families around the world. Thank you for watching, and I hope this story serves as a reminder of the importance of the checks and balances we need in order to stop scandals like this from happening in the future. I'm Jason Evans, and this is Factor 8. There's only one choice. Be you. Be Bayer.